Hi, grade tens. So we're going to be finishing off our discussion of organs today. So this is organs part two. We are still in your textbook in 2.1 and 2.2, page 56 to 60 and 64 to 71. We're going to learn about a few more organs and a few more organ systems to complete our um, discussion of organs uh, in the human body. And we're going to talk a little bit today about some organs that we can find in plants. Okay. So what are we going to do today? We're going to start off by talking about the digestive system and some of the organs in your digestive system. Then we're going to talk about your urinary system and some of the organs that make that up. We're going to finish off today talking about a few plant organs because believe it or not, plants also do have organs in them. And then we're going to finish off today with a second gizmo where you're going to be looking at the digestive system a little bit closer on gizmos again. So. Just a reminder, we learned this yesterday and last week, but remember we said cells are this basic unit of life, okay? So one singular cell is the most basic unit of life that we can have, okay? When cells come together and work as a team, we would call those tissues, okay? So a group of cells is called a tissue, and when tissues come together to perform a function, we would call them an organ, okay? We've also been looking at this week, how when organs can come together in groups, they can come together to form an organ system. And we've been talking about organs so far and the organ systems that make them up. So um, we're going to first talk, talk about digestion a little bit. So digestive organs are made up of all different tissue types. So your mouth, even though you think of your mouth as being in the inside of your body, it's really considered the outside of your body, okay? Because everything outside your body, like your skin, is considered the outside as well as sort of the tube that goes through your body from your mouth down to where you excrete your waste, okay, is also considered the outside of your body. Okay, so your mouth, the, the tissue on the inside of your mouth is still considered epithelial tissue. You have saliva glands that are made of epithelial tissue. Your tongue is a great example of um, something that's made of a, a number of tissues. You have epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue in your tongue. So there's all these different organs and parts of your digestive system that are great examples of um, all of the different tissue types we learned about last week. Okay, so getting your food from the outside of your body into your body so you can digest it. Okay, first thing we have to do is get the food to our stomach. Okay, so if you go have a snack and you put something in your mouth and you chew it and you swallow it, it's going to enter a tube called the esophagus. Now. Yesterday we took a look at, we said your esophagus, you can feel it right here on the, it's at the front of your throat. In behind your esophagus, sorry, your trachea, is your esophagus, which is a much softer and stretchier tube. And that makes sense because you're going to be swallowing food through it, so it has to be able to stretch and contract based on the food going into your body, okay? So um, the food enters your stomach through a tube called your esophagus that's in the back of your throat, okay? And the food gets pushed down through a motion called peristalsis, which is a, a smooth muscle contraction. So think of it kind of like if you have a tube of toothpaste. You pinch the end of the tube of toothpaste and then squish, 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 squish to get all the toothpaste out of the tube. Okay, That's the same thing that your esophagus does. What it'll do is pinch and then pinch, 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 pinch. So it's kind of like pinch up at the top and then pinch a little lower, pinch a little lower, pinch a little lower, pinch a little lower. And just like when you're squishing all the last bit of the toothpaste out of the tube, it's squishing the food all the way down towards your stomach. Okay? And that motion is called peristalsis. That's how you pronounce that word right there. Now, when it actually enters your stomach, your stomach's made of a number of tissues. So it's made of epithelial tissue, nervous tissue, and muscle tissue. We call it a J-shaped bag, because if you look at the bag, it's, it kind of looks like a J. And this is where your digestion process begins. Okay? Your stomach is actually lined with a thick layer of mucus to protect it from um, the strong acid, the stomach acid, that's in your stomach to help you digest your food. So the acid chemically breaks down those bonds that make up the molecules that make up your food. And so to prevent that acid from eating away the tissue that makes up your stomach, you have this nice thick layer of mucus that protects it. It also has muscle in it, so it churns, it squishes, it, it mixes all the food around that's inside your stomach. So when um, all the layers, the muscle in the lining of your stomach kind of squish and churn and squish squash squash all the food up in there and it mixes it with all the digestive juices the acids and the enzymes in your stomach that help you break down your food after your stomach 
your food or the material digesting enters your intestines. Okay, and now there's two types of intestines. First, it's going to enter your small intestine, and believe it or not, although your small intestine is longer, the tube itself is skinnier. Okay, um, and then it enters your large intestine. Okay, your large intestine, it's a much shorter tube, but it's much thicker in diameter. Okay. Uh, both of those are used to chemically digest your food as well as remove wastes from your body. Okay. So the small intestine is the longest and arguably the most important part of your digestive system. Okay, it's all highlighted in pink right here. Okay. Um, and it is attached directly to your stomach. Okay. So the majority of your abdomen, so what you think of is actually is your belly. Okay, your stomach's actually a little bit higher. Your stomach is right below your rib cage, whereas where we actually think of our belly, and we may say I have a belly ache, okay, um, is where your intestines are. Okay, it's all coiled up. So your belly button would probably be in this diagram right about here. So when you have like your stomach, what you're actually usually pointing at is where your intestines are. Okay, so this tube is all coiled up and round wound up around each other. Okay, and it fills up your um, your abdomen okay a lot of your food digestion is completed here and there's uh, accessory organs so additional smaller organs that the food doesn't actually travel through um, that helps digest your food and it's also where a lot of your reabsorption of those important nutrients from your food happens so all of the things that we need to get out of our food to stay healthy leaves um, the food in our small intestine and actually gets absorbed into our blood okay in the small intestines now the last sort of um, stretch of your digestive system is your large intestine, okay? So um, this is actually where your feces is formed. It's about twice the width, so twice as thick as the small intestine. And big job of your, your large intestine is to reabsorb water, so take all of the extra water out of your food that we can use, and also salts and minerals out of your food, okay? So it's sort of, you can see all the small intestine here, it kind of goes up, across, and down. To where it can then be excreted okay so really from swallowing to exiting your body it's going to go through your esophagus into your stomach then into your small intestine and then large intestine and then exit your body okay there are some accessory organs so these are organs that are used in digestion but they're not um, the actual pathway that the food moves through. So we call it just like you may have accessories to your outfit. These are accessories, they still help in digestion, but it's not actually where the food goes. Uh, one accessory organ is your pancreas. Uh, your pancreas has a couple important jobs. It produces something called pancreatic juice. And in this sort of fluid, uh, you have a lot of extra digestive enzymes that help you break down and digest your food. And it's released from a small duct, which goes right into your small intestine. So your pancreas is right here. A lot of times it's described as looking like a leaf, okay? Uh, and it's got this little duct or a little pathway, a little tube that goes right through the center of it that is connected to your um, small intestine where all those juices that help you digest your food is sort of released to allow you to help, to help you with digestion. Uh, it also is responsible for producing um, hormones that help you regulate your blood sugar. So you may have heard of insulin or glucagon before. Like if you know someone who has diabetes, you may have heard of insulin. Your pancreas is involved in making sure that at any given time you don't have too much or too little sugars or glucose in your blood to keep you healthy. The next organ we're going to talk about is your liver. Now your liver is sort of right across under your um, ribs as well. So your ribs would usually be right up here, which is where your lungs and your heart is. Okay, so your liver kind of goes across and your stomach is sort of hidden in behind. Okay. So this is actually your largest internal organ. Your largest organ of your body is actually your skin, okay? Because you have so much skin all over your body. Your largest internal organ, organ inside your body versus the outside of your body, like your skin, is your liver. Now your liver has something like 300 jobs. It does a ton of things in your body. Uh, some of the big things that your liver's involved in is making sure your, your blood has the proper chemistry, blood composition and chemical makeup. Uh, it removes um, broken red blood cells from your blood. Uh, it helps process some nutrients. It helps detoxify your body, so take bad things out of your blood. 
It also produces something called bile, which is a, another juice, a digestive juice that helps you digest fats. And there's a, a lot of vitamins and minerals that are stored in your liver long term. Another cool thing about your liver, it's actually the only organ in your body that can regenerate itself. So for example, if someone in your body needed, if someone in your family needed a liver transplant, you could donate a piece of your liver to them. That uh, piece would grow into a full-size liver in the person who is receiving the organ donation, and the piece that you cut away uh, would actually regrow. It's the only organ in your body that can do that, which is pretty cool. So overall, the digestive system, its job is to take in your sustenance, so get food from outside your body into your body, complete the physical digestion, so actually breaking food into smaller pieces so that you can uh, absorb it more easily, complete the chemical digestion, so breaking down the bonds that make up those molecules in your food, um, and absorbing those nutrients to your body as well as removing solid waste. Okay. We're also going to talk about your urinary system. So the major organs in your urinary system are your kidneys. Now you have two kidneys in your body. They are kidney bean shaped or jelly bean shaped, depending on what types of foods you're eating while you're on, uh, uh, in quarantine right now. Uh, they're found in your lower back. So kind of right above where your pants would sit uh, in your middle of your lower back you would, is where your two kidneys would be. Uh, your kidneys serve a lot of function. One, they make sure that you have regulated water and salt in your body, so you have enough water in your body and enough salt in your body. Uh, it helps us remove uh, really harsh waste, especially nitrogen-containing waste called urea and ammonia. You get rid of those. That's what kind of gives your urine that distinctive smell is these nitrogen-containing um, wastes. And they also uh, form urine, which is then sent to your bladder, stored in your body until you are going to expel it. So you have two kidneys, like we said, in the back of your body. Your bladder is pretty low um, in your abdomen, okay? So your two kidneys, this would be your lower back. This would be much closer to the lower part of your um, abdomen. It's essentially just a hollow elastic organ. So it's just a stretchy bag that collects urine. So your kidneys actually uh, filter all the waste out of your body, produce the urine, and it sends it down into your bladder where it's stored. Uh, and then eventually your, bla your bladder will um, expel it. So your bladder has nervous tissue in it that will sense as it stretches. And when it gets to a certain point, that's when you'll feel the sensation of having to go to the bathroom. That's going to tell your, that signal will get sent to your brain saying our bladder's full. Your body then produces that sensation, which tells you you have to go to the bathroom. And then you can go and that urine can be expelled. Okay, so the major job of your excretory system, like we see your two kidneys in your lower back, your urinary bladder close to the bottom of your body. Uh, it, the major job is to filter waste from your body, remove those waste from your body, and excrete them in the form of urine. And then, like we said, it also helps maintain your water, your salt, your pH balance in your body to make sure that you're in a healthy internal environment. Okay, so those are all the human animal organs we're going to talk about in the human animal organ system. The last thing we're going to end talking about are plant organs. Now, we don't often think of plants as having organs, but they're made of cells. They have tissues, and those tissues can group together to make organs. They just may not look what we would traditionally think of organs to look like. So we're going to talk about four major plant organs. The first one we're going to talk about is the stem. Now, the stem gives the plant structure. So it's very similar to what our skeleton does. Okay. It provides support to the flowers and leaves and everything that's going to be above the earth and the plant. And it also can act like a transport system. So it connects the leaves and the flowers uh, that may be on the, ex, uh, the above ground portion of the plant to the roots down underground. Okay, So it's kind of like a highway or, or a pathway, similar to your um, blood vessels, like your veins, your uh, arteries, your capillaries we talked about last day. Okay, so it connects all of these organs that are on top of the, the plant to the organs that may be underground. So um, there's two parts of this transport system called the xylem and phloem. Xylem are responsible for taking materials from the roots up to the leaves, and the phloem are responsible for taking them from the leaves and the flowers down to the roots. Okay, so it's kind of like the xylem is the up escalator and the phloem is the down escalator. How I used to remember this is if you draw an X and a P, you can make a P really easily into a downwards arrow, arrow, 
and you can make an X easier into an up arrow. So this can help you remind you that xylem takes things from the roots up to the leaves because it makes an up arrow. The P can remind that it takes things from the top down to the bottom. Now I know you can make an arrow either way out of an X, so you may just want to use this P value, okay? Because you can really only make a down arrow out of a P. Uh, secondary organ we're going to talk about are the roots. Now the roots are really important, just like the stem gives its structure above the ground, the roots really anchors the plant in place so that if a gust of um, wind comes, trees aren't rolling down the street. Okay, the roots are actually what ground it and keep it in place. They also absorb a lot of the important things that the plant needs for growth and survival. Things like water, million, uh, minerals and nutrients that are in the soil, the roots are actually what absorbs it. And it also has a transport system in it. So there is xylem and phloem also in the roots. And similar to what we said before, the xylem are going to take things from the roots up to the stem, to the leaves, to the flowers. And the phloem is going to take things that have been sent from the leaves, the stems, the flowers back down deeper into the roots. Uh, the leaf is also an organ of the plant. Okay. Main job of the leaves is to actually undergo photosynthesis. So photosynthesis, if you don't remember talking about it at all in grade nine, is essentially the process by which plants take energy from the sun and carbon dioxide from the air to produce sugars and oxygen. The oxygen is a waste product for them, which is beneficial for us because we, we know we need it to survive. We learned that yesterday when we looked at um, the lungs. And the sugars are really helpful because that's essentially the food for the plant. That's why uh, if you go away on vacation and you have a hamster, you have to leave the hamster food because it needs to ingest that food. Whereas your plant, you don't need to leave food for your plant. You just need to make sure it's got water and access to sun so it can make because it can make its own food. Okay, that you may remember that from grade nine when we learned about the difference between a producer and a consumer. Okay, so plants are a producer because they undergo photosynthesis and they can produce their own food. We are, for example, a consumer because we have to consume energy, consume our food. We can't produce it ourselves. There's a special tissue. It's a type of ground tissue in the leaf called mesophyll. That's how you pronounce that word. And that's actually where the photosynthesis occurs. The last organ we're going to talk about in plants are the flowers. So the main job of the flower is actually to allow for reproduction. OK, uh, so from the flower is produced any fruit or seeds, which then allows a new plant to grow. So for example, apples, you may eat one for lunch, has, um, if you were, is essentially the reproductive part of the, of the plant. So the way you would grow a new apple tree is through the fruit or the seeds that's in that fruit, okay? So reproduction occurs, and a lot of time we don't realize this, for a lot of plants through still sexual reproduction. So when pollen, which is equivalent to like uh, sperm in uh, humans, fertilizes an egg. So believe it or not, flowers, sometimes if they're a male flower, will produce pollen. Female flowers will produce the egg. Uh, there are such a thing though, as called perfect flowers though, where they actually have two structures that produce both the pollen and the eggs. So for example, let's say we're in a traditional plant that has both male flowers and female flowers. It doesn't have a perfect flower. Uh, a bee or a bird or a bug may go to the male flower okay, get to try to get some nectar or, or get some food from the flower. It's going to get covered in all of that pollen. And then when it goes to the next flower, that pollen is going to get rubbed off in where the egg is down in the center of the flower. And then that flower could then produce a seed or a fruit, which would uh, create a new generation of the plant. Okay, so pretty neat. You may not know that. Actually, seeds and fruits are the way that plants reproduce, and there's actually male and female flowers or perfect flowers, depending on the type of plant, and that's part of the way that they can reproduce. Okay, so how we're going to end off today's class, you're going to be looking a little bit closer at the digestive system. This is one of the more complicated ones we talked about today. What you're going to do is you're going to go back to Move this out of your way. Explore learning. Okay, you're gonna log in like usual. Okay, remember, I'm already logged in, uh, but remember your email should be your GAPS email. 
and your password should be the same password that you use to get into school on your computers. You're going to go to the gizmo here, which is the digestive system gizmo, and launch it. The worksheet to go through the activities that you are responsible for can be found on Google Classroom under assignments. This is what the gizmo looks like. And just like yesterday, if you could please remember to complete these five questions below. Okay, and check your answers, submit those uh, before you uh, finish your gizmo and submit it today. Okay, other than that, if you have any questions, you can contact me by email, okay, or on Google Classroom. Uh, I get the responses a little bit quicker. I get the notifications on my phone a little bit quicker via uh, on email versus Classroom. Um, if you are looking for a quicker response, if you're also looking for a quick response, make sure to check out when my office hours are. Um, and feel free to reach out for, reach out to me if you need help with anything. Okay. As always, make sure you're staying safe, staying healthy, and staying inside. And looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys very soon. Okay.